Hello students, you are welcome in my online teaching classes. I am Shishpal Chauhan. Today I have brought the summary of William Shakespeare's famous play, The Merchant of Venice. Let me give you a brief introduction to William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare was the greatest dramatist of the world. He wrote great dramas that are studied all over the world. Scholars write theses on them and also make researches on his life and works. Characters in the first and second scene of the play. We meet the following characters in the opening scene, that is Act 1, Scene 1 of the play The Merchant of Venice. Number 1. Antonio. Antonio is a Vatican merchant who signs a bond as a guarantee to the loan taken by Bassanio from Shylock, a Jewish moneylender. Number 2 character is Bassanio. Bassanio is a gentleman who is Antonio's dear friend and kinsman. Bassanio's love for Portia, a wealthy lady from Belmonte, creates a very difficult situation for Antonio. Graciano. Graciano is Bassanio's friend. He is a hard critic of Shylock also. Portia. Portia is a wealthy heiress to Belmont. Her father died after he had made a will in which he binds his daughter Portia by a vow regarding the choice of her husband by means of lottery, that is, choosing the right casket that contains Portia's portrait. Her role in the play is of utmost importance. Nerissa. Nerissa is Portia's lady-in-waiting and confidant. Salarino is a friend of Antonio, Bassanio and Lorenzo. Seventh, Solanio also remains with Salarino. Eighth character in this scene is Prince of Morocco. He is a prince who takes part in choosing the right casket to win Portia as his life partner. So let me explain Act 1, Scene 1 now. The scene 1 of Act 1 opens with Antonio conversing with his friends Solanio and Salarino. Antonio is a rich merchant of Venice, but today he is upset. He is unable to find out a reason for his somber mood. His friends Salarino and Solanio try to guess and tell him several possible reasons for his sadness. They think that Antonio's ships might be the cause of his sadness. Solanio also says that Antonio might have fallen in love and that might be the reason for his gloomy mood. But Antonio rejects all of these reasons for his sadness. In the meantime, Antonio's other friends Lorenzo, Graciano and Bassanio also reach there. Their conversation in the beginning also centers around Antonio's sadness. After some time, Lorenzo and Graciano leave the place and now Antonio and Bassanio remain there. We come to know that Bassanio also reveals his purpose to visit Belmonte to try his luck at winning Portia's hand to make her his wife. He wants to get a loan from Antonio so as to raise his status to take part in choosing the right casket to marry Portia. But Antonio shows his inability to give him a loan because he has already invested his money in buying goods and sending them to different corners of the world by ships. His ships are on the sea way to reach their destinations. Antonio also suggests to Bassanio that he could help him borrow money from someone in Venice on his behalf. After this, both of them leave the place critical analysis of the scene. After reading this scene, we come to know that Antonio is a melancholy character. He is unable to find out the real reason for his sadness. We also meet other characters like Solanio and Salarino, Lorenzo and Graciano and Bassanio in this scene. Graciano talks too much and in Bassanio's views, it's very difficult to find out meaning in his words. Bassanio is Antonio's first friend. Now I shall begin with the summary of uh, Act 1, Scene 2. This scene takes place in Belmonte, where Portia and her maid servant Nerissa are talking. Portia is upset to think about her father's will in which he has put conditions for her to marry. Portia cannot marry the person of her choice. Her father has left three caskets made of gold, silver and lead. Whosoever chooses the casket in which he finds Portia's picture would be the right casket and he shall be allowed to marry her. Thus Portia is bound to honor her father's will. She discusses all this with Nerissa, her maid servant. In a way, Portia has been caught in a very difficult situation. 
she is unable to choose the person she likes she says the will of a living daughter curbed by the will of a dead father she can neither choose nor reject anyone she is bound to follow her conscience due to her immense love and respect towards her father who is no more now nerissa consoles her that the person who chooses the right casket would surely love her truly after that porcia tells nerissa to name the suitors who have so far tried their luck in choosing the right casket but have failed in their attempts nerissa names them one by one and porcia describes their personalities according to what she thinks about them we come to know porcia's views on her suitors also she does not like them at all after that nerissa reminds porcia of bassanio who once happened to come there in belmont in company of the marquis of montfrat when her father was alive nerissa calls him a venetian a scholar and a soldier at this porcia shows her interest by saying yes yes it was bassanio i think he was so called in the meantime a serving man enters and informs porcia that the prince of morocco would reach there at night and her four suitors seek her leave porcia does not show any sign of happiness at the news of prince of morocco's arrival in belmont acts 1 scene 3 characters in the scene are bassanio shylock and antonio the scene in brief in this scene bassanio goes to meet shylock at his house he tells him that he needs 3000 ducats at this shylock speaks to him in a roundabout way and vents out his anger jealousy and greed while talking with bassanio and antonio also we come to know a lot about shylock's hatred for the christians and his greed for money the third scene of act 1 scene 3 shifts to venice where we find bassanio talking with shylock the cruel and greedy money lender bassanio tells him that he needs a loan of 3000 ducats for 3 months from him on antonio's surety shylock already knows that antonio at present has no cash with him because he has invested all of his money on the goods which are in ships at the separate places in sea to reach their destinations he also tells bassanio that anything could happen to the ships as they are prone to so many risks shylock says that he cannot give loan to him due to that while conversing with bassanio shylock also expresses his hatred for antonio because the latter harms the former's business by giving loans without interest we also come to know from shylock that he hates antonio because he is a christian he says i hate him for he is a christian and also he lends money to people without interest and thus harms his business after some time antonio also reaches there we find antonio as a bold person who exposes shylock's greed and hypocrisy without hesitation he tells him as to how he wrongly quotes the scriptures to justify his own practice of taking high interest on loans given by him to people Antonio's remarks on Shylock heated up the conversation going on between them and finally it is decided that Antonio would sign a bond stating that Shylock would be entitled to cut 1 pound of flesh from any part of Antonio's body if the loan was not returned on time. Finally Antonio agrees to sign the bond despite Bassanio's persuasion to him for not signing the bond at all thus we see much of Shylock's hypocrisy and greed in this scene Antonio proves himself that he is a true friend Bassanio also shows that his concern to Antonio while persuading him not to sign the bond scene 3 of act 1 now i am going to explain the scene 3 of act 1 of the merchant of venice written by william shakespeare this scene opens with the entry of the prince of morocco in portia's room she is there along with her friend nerissa and other attendants the prince tells portia about his qualities and urges her not to dislike him just because of his black color of his skin he says mistake me not for my complexion etc he describes his behavior in a very poetic manner he also says that the most beautiful girls of his country love him as he looks to them in his black skin i swear the best regarded virgins of our clime have loved it too 
Portia tells him that she is bound by a vow given to her father by her that she cannot choose her husband of her own choice. He will have to choose the right casket to win her. She also informs him that if he fails in choosing the right casket that contains her portrait, he will have to remain unmarried throughout his life. The prince becomes impatient and requests her to take him to the place where caskets are there so that he could try his fortune. After that, he again narrates the story of his own heroism. Now I shall proceed to Act 2, Scene 1. This scene is enacted in Shylock's home. We meet Launcelot Gobo, his Shylock's servant and old Gobo's son. Launcelot is found on the stage arguing himself whether he should continue serving Shylock or not. He calls Shylock a fiend. After a long debate with himself, he decides to leave service in Shylock's house. In the meanwhile, Launcelot's father, old Gobo, also arrives there. He is carrying a basket containing some gifts. He wants to deliver it to Shylock. Old Gobo is almost blind, so he does not recognize his own son, whom he meets there. He asks Launcelot to tell him the way to Shylock's home. At this, Launcelot does not tell old Gobo that he is his son. He wants to create some fun out of this situation. He keeps on talking with his father in a roundabout way. Finally, he discloses his own identity to his father. He tells him that he has decided to leave his service in Shylock's house and join Bassanio as his master. After some time, Bassanio with Leonardo enters there. Both of them start talking to Bassanio in a confused manner. At last, he tells Bassanio that he wants to join as a cook in his house. Bassanio advises Launcelot first to go to Shylock and take leave from his master properly and then come to him. After that, Launcelot and his father leave the place. Now Bassanio tells Leonardo to arrange for shifting his necessary things to the ship that is bound to go to Belmonte. He also tells Leonardo to come back soon. In the meantime, Graciano comes there and he requests Bassanio to take him to Belmonte along with him. Bassanio fulfills his wish on the condition that he would not be outspoken at the place where no one knew him. Graciano promises Bassanio to do so. Thank you very much. This is the end of the video now.